Welcome back uh, to all our audience members. And now we move ahead with the next panel for today. A second panel and the topic for the same is digitization a boon or bane? Do we see existential crisis happening in the industry or not? That we shall get to know in a while. And uh, please join me in welcoming a panelist for the same. Ms. Mrinalde, Vice President and Head, PR and Corporate Communications, Moby Quick. No, no, Mr. 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 Uh, yes, I said Mr. Did as Miss? <laughs> okay. No, no, please, sir. Absolutely it not. I see right here. Huge, uh, huge identity crisis, Minal. Huge. <laughs> huge, huge. Absolutely not, sir. Mr. It is loud and clear. <laughs> it's okay. Mr. Bhaskar Majumdar, Head Marketing Communications, CSR and uh, Digital Ages. Miss Tanmanna Rath, The Good Edge. She's a communication strategist. Mr. Oh. Sudeep. Purgayasta, Executive Vice President, Head, Corporate and Brand Communications, Jindal Steel and Power. Mr. Venkatesh, Samyaju Director, Visage 11 Advisors. And this session will be moderated by Ms. Malbhi Chaudhary, PR Manager, Media Mike. Thank you, Aditya. Thank you for such a warm welcome. All the very best, please. Hi, everyone, the fellow panelists Hello. and the valued audience that's viewing us right now. So today we are here to explore the subject of utmost relevance in our rapidly changing world, which is digitization, a boon or bane. Um, the advent of digital age has brought unprecedented transformations to virtually every sector of our economy and society. And with such transformative power comes a series of critical questions with all these esteemed panelists who bring a wealth of expertise and diverse perspectives to shed a light on this crucial subject. So let's delve together into this thought-provoking session and navigate the digital landscape together without wasting any more time since we are very short and uh, it will be a quick discussion. I'll pose my first question, which is what are the pros and cons in the field of communication? And if I can start with Mr. Majumdar. Okay, uh, is Sudip in already? No, I don't yeah, see Sudip. Is Sudip is there. Yeah. First of all, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks, Karan and Exchange for Media, for inviting us to be part of the panel, as well as for considering me as part of the jury panel. It was really a nice, you know, uh, I mean, I saw a lot of good entries, so it was a good experience. But uh, I, Mr. Somiaji is also there, no? because he's generally late. But uh, having said that, you know, I think that the digital transformation has actually happened during during you know lockdown time. Just to give you an example that you know I am someone who starts his day with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, but along with that I need my seven or eight hard copies of the newspaper. Uh, now during lockdown, uh, it was difficult to get the newspapers, and I was somehow forcefully went digital to get or consume news. So professionals like us were, were I mean, uh, old professionals in the industry. But generally, I, I still prefer to get the newspaper, which is which is you know uh, in a print version and in a, a physical version. But somehow we move towards you know the digital way. So there are certain good things. There are certain bad things. It happens with technology where we are heavily dependent on technology. Uh, good things are this that you know in earlier times we have seen that I mean, I'm sure that everyone will agree with me whenever you used to go for uh, pitching for any particular story and the, the story is compelling enough uh, journalists may consider it and you may actually see the light of that particular news to come into the physical copy of the newspaper maybe the next day or maybe in within one week's time but nowadays the process I think is the same but uh, again if the journalist has considered to carry the news it first gets into the website then it's been amplified by the Twitter handle of the media house, then again amplified by the Twitter handle of the journalist. And then the brand himself itself can you know, amplify it on their own way, putting into their own social media handle. So I think in terms of reach, uh, in terms of time, in terms of engaging with people and getting instant response is much more easier in a digital age. But uh, the issues are that, you know, unlike uh, print, uh, they have, you know, multiple checks and balances, which makes them more credible. Uh, and in digital and social, it's not there. So, uh, rest. I will love to listen from others. Mr. Dave, your thoughts? Yeah, thank you, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. 
uh, and thank you exchange for media and current and for you know, inviting me for this panel and uh, you know these changing times and these are very apt panel in fact uh, so you know as mr majumda said you know we have been kind of heavily dependent on as as a pro pr professional we have been heavily dependent on traditional forms of consuming news so though you know there has been lot there's been a lot of digitization but still we kind of tend to uh, read the newspapers we would want to see a print version of whatever is there uh, but you know uh, the digital age, age has actually transformed communication and then it's 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 crucial to navigate the pros and cons effectively so according to me uh, the pros uh, would be you know uh, digital has led to instant connectivity you know it has enabled real time communication and while bridging uh, the gap uh, effortlessly uh, of course you know it's, it has expanded our audience you know not only you know uh, within the local circles but globally also it has expanded our uh, audience so therefore it has uh, broken the geographical barriers or the boundaries i might say uh, of course you know there has been efficient collaboration you know remote work has become seamless you know so that way and 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 we know and we keep on talking about data insights and all of course those analytics has actually refined our communication strategies you know so uh, so for me these are some of the pros but you know what are the challenges what are the cons you know if i may you know there's a lot of noise there's a lot of digital noise so information overload overload you know has has led to reduced attention span uh, then there is the risk of cyber security you know uh, sensitive data uh, so we need to protect those sensitive data from online threats uh, there is of course we are expected to be always on this is always on culture has happened you know then that is since the lockdown has taken place right uh, that is becoming very challenging uh, i think we are over over relying on uh, tech and that has somewhat uh, hindered our personal connections uh, and and that's why we you know that human connections need to be kind of more fostered and there is a digital divide you know uh, not everyone has equal access to technology so these are some of the challenges that i feel rightly said even i feel that uh, even though it has become very you know easy for people to uh, navigate with automated tasks and everything but there's definitely a uh, uh, information overload mm -hmm. and definitely yeah. we are drowning in too much of knowledge and it's just haywired everywhere right now oh, yeah. and and wanting to add uh, minal uh, fantastic branding of your company yeah uh, uh, i am also going to wear a aegis t-shirt now ah, that's a good one i missed that i should have done that too <laughs> Okay, uh, Ms. Tanmana, your thoughts? Uh, see, like Bhaskar mentioned, uh, we are old timers. I would not say we are totally transforming into the digital age. We are more of the hybrid players. And I think the success lies there because there is a thorough understanding of how the traditional PR works and adapting uh, what is good in the new age uh, PR medium. Uh, in terms of, see, a lot of points have been already touched upon. What I would personally think crisis is a big challenge when it comes to the new age media because it's difficult to control. It just goes on amplifying. You know, the good part is the good thing gets amplified and so does the bad. So the crisis is one part, which is a big challenge. 24 by 7 being alert. Yes, a challenge. Yes, yes and a no, because it eats into your personal time. But uh, overall, I think... Uh, it's it's up to the pace at the way we, which we worked. It's made us more wholesome and integrated, which probably as traditional PR players, we uh, had only media media to do. So, you know, advantages and disadvantages are many, but it depends how we look at it and how we use it. That would be my perspective of looking at uh, digitization in PR. Right, right. Um, Mr. Sudeep. Would you like to add something? Yes. Well, good afternoon. I am uh, honored to be part of uh, such a August gathering of panelists. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, I think most of the points have already been covered and very well covered, I must say. But I would just dwell upon two things. One very quickly is that 
uh, with digitization, uh, so one is one point is from industry perspective and one is more general. I think from a digitization perspective, uh, one of the uh, while there are many goods of it, but one of the ills is that you know there has been a rampant uh, circulation on fake news or news which are unsubstantiated, and you know you as professionals or we all as professionals spend a lot of time in trying to verify or to uh, you know prove it otherwise that this is not something which is true, and I think that itself is a very big challenge for many corporates and many. Uh, you know, businesses and individual uh, agencies as well. So I think that is one uh, very big challenge that we face uh, as to how do we kind of, you know, address that situation because it is, as Tanmana said, and before that, Bhaskar and also Mrinal said that, you know, this is, it spreads quick and fast. And, you know, uh, once it is out there, it actually is almost like a, you know, cat out of the bag. So uh, that is one challenge. But, you know, on the other side, I think digitization has also taken away the personal touch, the empathy, the human relation uh, relationship that we have built or we have bonded over. So let me give you a very small example that, you know, every day morning, getting a good morning on I have a great day on a WhatsApp and getting, let's say, a message on Diwali or New Year, a handwritten, uh, you know, letter or a note, which we used to do perhaps, when, you know, when we were perhaps even more younger. Uh, I think, you know, that that constant, you know, that personal touch, I think digitization takes away. So the digitization can never bring the empathy and the, you know, the, the humane aspect uh, of it in any communication. And I think we need to balance it out. So there are good and bad in both. Right, right. Mr. Venkatesh. I Hi, think... Yeah. I hope I'm audible. You're out in a good weather somewhere. <laughs> Got stuck as usual. Anyway, uh, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me here. And uh, good to see all my friends and peers in the group here. Uh, I think uh, what I've been hearing sort of summarizes the good and bad of digital coming into play for PR industry. The one good thing I have seen is that today you don't have to wait for a news that will make your headline, your Earlier days, the one thumb rule for going out to press or to reach out to public, you had to calibrate your message, your story. It has to be having a shelf life, etc. Today, for the smallest incidents and events, you can convert it into a good PR opportunity and a marketing and a communication opportunity. I think that wouldn't have been possible if there was no digital PR. The second important aspect that digital PR has added is that Today, you don't need to be the sole person talking about your own uh, good, right? So you don't control the narrative. There is a two-way control that happens. So you're getting constant feedback and you're able to fine-tune your messaging. So somebody was talking about a 24 into 7 being available for news. I think that has happened. This wouldn't have happened if uh, digital PR was not in play. And lastly, being able to get endorsement. Earned space was the most important uh, activity of PR when we used to separate from Advertisement we typically used to call earned space versus paid space kind of stuff. So for earned space, the third party endorsement is also very highly possible because of digital uh, uh, being available now and unlike the traditional places. So for a PR person, round the clock working and round the clock being able to do things for a client and not have four activities over a month or a year, that kind of PR is one. Today, PR is live, continuous. You put out some story today morning, today afternoon, you have something else which has happened. Everything is a story for you. So I think that excitement, that new things is what uh, digital has done. It, has, it comes with some kind of uh, disadvantages, but everything will have its own positives and negatives. I think uh, not being able to be in control of what you put out there in the shortest form is a summary of what it is doing negative to you. Everything else is positive. With that, I think... Uh, my understanding of digital is already rightly said like we like everything has its own advantages and disadvantages and we just need to be the ones commanding and in control of things so that like we can enjoy the goods and navigate the bad ones so um, let's uh, go to our second question which is is AI propelling technology-enabled communication and transforming how PR professionals function? If I can start with you itself, Mr. Venkatesh. Oh, okay. 
so uh, it's too early for me as a person who's been largely a traditional pr person to say whether exactly is transforming uh, the function but yes i see a lot of advantages it is like you know too uh, early bird kind of uh, stuff because for people who have to use ai and technology to facilitate the communication you need a lot of investment lot of software you know those are the kind of people who should ideally be talking about what is yeah. set to come in but what i am seeing in public domain is everybody is now trying to use a chat gpt thinking that is the beginning and end of ai i think it's too uh, naive to think that chat gpt is the only thing that uh, ai does for you a lot of people are using it for research as well as you know to being able to pull out trends and uh, evaluation i think these are two early signs of how uh, pr can use uh, ai but yes the transformation is definitely going to happen and it's going to be stay there uh, i am not able to stargaze and see what all new products will come in but i am currently benefiting from data analytics and evaluation as the key tool which i am able to use from uh, chat gpt exactly earlier we tried a bit on writing content and other stuff and we've seen i think we lost you yeah this is one more reason you know technology that it's actually not very helpful i don't know whether we are using or how to use ai to be able to put out the content and even i i've seen a new product which is help, actually help again yeah i think because he's yeah, yeah. somewhere so this these are the low points on technology yeah, live like, live you know, examples that sometimes one should be this one <laughs> okay so whosoever is in a better Okay. Uh, can, I take, can I can I take can I take this? You know. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So, I, see, I agree uh, with uh, what Venkat Venki said right now, but what I also feel that you know AI, you know, uh, has undeniably you know has an influence uh, on how PR professionals function. You know, you know they will kind of uh, and and I'll give you some examples. Uh, like for example, data driven insights. You know. so ai analyzes vast amounts of data you know that helps us to kind of understand uh, our audience sentiments our trends uh, and uh, news uh, in real time you know and probably that also gives us more information to kind of have more strategic and targeted communication you know that way it has helped you know and then of course there is uh, this aspect of automated content creation you know uh, ai generated content uh, you know has streamlined the writing process uh, you know press release articles and social media posts can be produced faster and in fact they can be uh, also uh, kind of timed as per uh, your suitability you know this has left i mean what it does is you know it is is leaving peer professionals more time uh, for strategy and relationship building uh, which is uh, more important which ai can't deliver uh, yeah. you know then of course uh, there is this thing of personalized outreach which ai tailors messages based on the recipient preferences you know and behavior so this personalization improves the engagement uh, and builds stronger relationships and of course there is a media monitoring so ai yeah. tools are there to track media coverage and sentiment which is allow us to adjust strategies quickly and you know gives us response to break news or crisis you know however having said that there are challenges you know and we have seen that we have you know, we have been you know facing it there are ethical concerns you know it raises ethical questions especially in uh, deep fake technology uh, and automated social media posting you know uh, we 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 as professionals must navigate these concerns with uh, utmost care you know of course ai you know that human touch is missing here you know pr is what pr is all about relationships absolutely While ai enhances efficiency the human touch in communication remains irreplaceable uh, for trust building and also for crisis management and of course you know the skill adaptation you know uh, we as pr professionals must continuously update our skills to leverage ai tools effectively uh, and this and this field is evolving every day right we should integrate ai to our existing tools and not let ai sit on everything and you know sit over everything and kind of dominate right so that's what i feel uh, i would like to add to what vinal just said uh, i think it is uh, it's not fair that pr professionals get worried about jobs being lost etc i think how smartly we use it 
as a means to a solution rather than a solution in itself. And that is where and how it should be used to use it most effectively to cover the points which Mrinal just mentioned. And uh, I think that is where the success uh, lies and that is exactly where we can use it effectively, I feel. So this entire discussion of jobs being lost, et cetera, I don't think yeah, yeah. Is, is, is necessary because if your fundamentals are in place, then one uses it smartly for a better output. What more does one need? Yeah. And But yes, plagiarism, et cetera, and some legal aspects are things which still we need clarity because it's very new, very niche. Uh, maybe once that is in place, we would be in a better position to say whether, uh, you know, we are actually plagiarizing or we are creating content. So those are the aspects which will get clearer as we move on on this path. Also to uh, add to what Tanmana and Minal has said and also to Venki, I think it's too early to understand the impact of AI. You know, it happens with all technologies. You know, it's always been, you know, a lot of, lot of discussion happens. But I think it will take another good one year, one and a half years to, you know, things to settle down. But having said that, I was having a chat with a very senior journalist in a financial newspaper. And I was asking him that, you know, what are the possibilities of, you know, uh, chat GPT taking away job, job from the uh, entry level and the mid level of the journalist. And he said that, you know, a chat GPT can, uh, produce an article based on whatever the information is available over there. And to have a good article to be done, uh, you need certain quotes, like a quote from a, say, PwC spokesperson, maybe from a government, and that is not possible with ChatGPT. And during this uh, discussion, he said, which is a very bold statement, and he said, you know, ChatGPT is for people who are below average, right? So it's going to close the work which is done by the mediocre people. People who are already as Tanman has rightly said, who have got very good hang over their own work, uh, they can easily survive. And, you know, in Hindi, mein kaha hai, jaisa ab ho, waise ab ho. so the article which you generally write, it actually talks more about how your personality is. Now, if you, when you get the article done from chat GPT, it's not possible. Uh, uh but yeah, yeah, I think AI tools will be very much uh, useful for you know, understanding the impact of a particular campaign, understand the sentiments, uh, because till date, we are, we are still stuck with uh, column sentiment evaluation, right? Somehow we have to have some kind of, you know, tech-based evaluation of campaigns, which may not be a foolproof thing, but may be better than at least column sentiment measurement. I have one more point if I could add to what Bhaskar just said. Uh, you know, one of my team members used ChatGPT to produce an article for a client. And because she didn't have much time in hand and she used it, she did a little bit of a rewriting, et cetera. And the feedback from the client surprisingly was, uh, has the writer changed? We see a change in the tone because of the five articles the person had done and the sixth one had a different tone. I was amazed and surprised. How could they figure that out? But yes, the human aspect, the personality, and this so is what Tanmana, So Tanmana, uh, there is another thing also. I was just you know attending one of the panels and I got to know Hmm. that any article which generally talks about data or which keeps about data uh, of 2020, mm -hmm. generally people think that it's been generated by uh, ChatGPT because ChatGPT doesn't have data of 21, 22, and 23. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much it is true. That's I have to research it. Had no data. Yeah. Just the tone, et cetera. I mean, but yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously that personalization will be missing. Tanmana. Yeah. You know, chat GPT GPT uses get... too vocabularized and you know very oh. high intensity English language that yeah, so in general that don't is... use that. Oh. So yeah, there's a difference, a big difference to note. Sudeep, you are on mute. Yeah. Oh, so my two cents into this is uh, you know very well covered by the esteemed panelists over here. And Rinal, by the way, the with the Mobi Quick uh, branding, you are glowing even more. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, separate, but. Coming back very uh, quickly, uh, I think that you know, in all organizations, I look at a at a funny side of it that the CEOs or the MDs or the promoters would still need the communication team and the communication manager to be uh, to be screaming and shouting that you know you have not done your job, you are not managing your team, you know what is this? I don't like this, you know you have not spoken to X, Y, and Z. So I think the CEO or the or the, or the MD of the organization would always need a human interface just to no. rant and to shout <clears throat> so that they, because, you know, they can't do that to an AI, you know, because AI is going to smile and say, okay, thank you. So, you know, <laughs> I, 
So I think that's the funny side of it. The sunny side of it that I think uh, you know, if we do our jobs well, it we it is well kept because the CEO will need another human being to talk to, and also you know use that uh, person as his or her sounding board and also scream and shout at times. Right, right. So since we are just left with ten more minutes, I'll quickly switch to my last question which is how rapid digitalization of media is revolutionizing the public relations industry. So if, if I may, uh, yeah. I'll just give you a small example. You know, the easiest way a PR professional can uh, do something about their brand or for their client is to write an author article uh, and to get it published either in a financial newspaper, that will be 800 words, or maybe a business magazine, which will be 1400, 1500 words. Now the system or the process is still the same, but whenever you are writing author article, you always have to keep in mind that how do you take out you know twenty tweets out of it, or maybe a five hundred word blog out of it, or maybe three hundred word LinkedIn out of it. So that's how I mean it has become more of new age content creation. I think you know uh, digital uh, transformation in terms of uh, the impact on media or the way we work is a classic example of this. Uh, this is a new trend, Vaskar. It is called as it is generally referred to as long tailing in ad factors. Uh, yes, I've heard what I used to hear. So yeah. what happens is you take an idea and you start, first ideate it in a way. You put it on your website or your blog. Yeah. That yeah. blog leads into some tweets. Those tweets lead into some uh, story in some publication, and that exactly. publication then uh, it is actually used as an aggregation for other publications. You translate it, and then you put it on some like you know an influencer writes about it. And all the way it goes through the entire channel of whatever uh, is available with one single messaging. I think that is the single biggest thing that's happened after digitization, digital yeah. uh, is available, which was not happening before. You know, you just would do a story in a print media and that's over. Yeah. And I think it's what, more interactive also. So WhatsApp message, uh, Twitter, you know, you could do so many things today. A uh, podcast following it, you know, there, there, there's endless opportunities for one single idea to travel. And especially for us, I mean, uh, when I say us, we, I'm talking on behalf of all the panelists. I think we all come from uh, the Orkut age and from Orkut to understanding podcast is a huge journey. And somehow I think our generation have uh, understood or learned it or adopted it in a very hard way. For the younger generation, it's much more easier to adopt. Yeah, Vince, you know, absolutely. You know, uh, as, uh, you know, Bhaskar was saying and Venki also mentioned, you know, the long tailing, you know, uh, I mean, it, it is all about, you know, how you create the digitization has kind of uh, enabled us to kind of think and how to create the content and how it's to be distributed, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. the era offers a plethora of tools and platforms for content True. creation and distribution, right? And also in terms of social media amplification, you know, there are social media platforms which amplify PR efforts, you know, uh, or enabling messages to go viral and reach a vast audience quickly. So, you know, PR professionals like us, uh, can leverage, uh, you know, influencer partnerships and user-generated content to enhance, uh, you know, different campaigns. And again, you know, uh, if you if you talk about crisis management, you know, digital media really accelerates the spread of information. You know, making crisis management more critical than ever. So, you know, the PR professionals must be proactive in addressing issues and managing reputational risk on uh, on digital platforms so so look at how it has transformed and how it is actually kind of trying to kind of uh, it's a kind of influenced us so and that's how you know you know from an output to a podcast we have actually kind of put our thinking hats and trying to see you know how we can make it better how we can personalize each engagement uh, look at virality uh, look at influencer identification and there there is this 24 by 7 news cycle how are we relevant for those uh, and then later on kind of measuring the roi so that's what i feel uh, how you know uh, you know digitization is i think the fun part is it's interactive and engaging which wasn't there it was one way now it's a two way communication so it opens up for a lot of activities exactly. and things which one was not able to do so that that is exciting definitely in fact, it's a double short, you know, it gives you the option to nurture, you know, engage, nurture and reach to different sure. people. But as you know, the social and digital media is more of paid medium. So there is always a possibility of there, there can be some negative, you know, information which can be flowed. Again, 
uh, it's, it's a paid medium that's why it's much more easier so it's a double edged sword and uh, sudeep you may also say so because i think hum logo ne itna bola sudeep has not been able to give any comments no no i i you know when stalwarts are speaking it is better to you know take the pulse of wisdom <laughs> but at the same time uh, my my two cents would be that you know i take a leave uh, out of uh, uh, our honorable prime minister the man is in is in his 70s Absolutely. and you know he he stops uh, he never stops amazing me the way he has embraced technology True. the way he has you know defined what uh, you know technology can be uh, you know how technology can be used to communicate and he's he's talking to you know billions of people i'm not even saying millions i mean you know uh, the indian audience is 1.4 and he's also talking to a global audience so, you know the way he deploys technology and True. the way you know he is uh, you know leading the curve i think you know uh, so what it tells me is that if one wants to learn if one wants to embrace something age is not a factor age is yeah. just a number but mm-hmm. you just need to have that knack to embrace it and i think uh, here there is a learning lesson that i take from our honorable prime minister well said well said well said but but i think what we all should not forget is for a pr person how much ever technology and digitization happens our only calling card is a relationship and being able to influence absolutely. people on a one to one absolutely absolutely that's the number one primary thing absolutely we forget that by the way uh, venki just to buttress that point further your point which is very well uh, very well taken is that uh, while the prime minister has uh, embraced technology he still continues with his road shows yeah. and yatra yeah yeah so that's absolutely the, the, g- hybrid, the, g- g- the g20 the g20 was an idea of his like you know trying to have a party with his friends yeah right exactly. <laughs> absolutely g20 became a kind of a full party for the nation yes. uh, see i don't know one parting comment you know we talk about ai 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 and we kind of make so halla about ai please understand ai is what artificial intelligence only it's artificial yes you know? absolutely uh, you know exactly you can't what can't the kind previous of panelist said <laughs> it's still very so, far away it's still yeah, very so, far so yeah so our human connections our human intelligence far outweighs I, yeah yeah i think now madhuri needs to come in yeah she needs to yeah i think we just left with two more minutes so first of all thank you everyone for your valuable contributions really um, like ai and artificial intelligence and this technology digitization everything is really taking over everybody's minds and playing with it like it's going to be a no, no. drastic change people are going to lose their jobs and what not but definitely it's something which we need to be you know always reminding us that it's not merely a force we contend with but one that we harness to drive positive changes in not just our industries but beyond so yeah. it's we should exactly. use for the betterment and not be exactly. because it's something for us it's there for us to do better things not to destroy anything absolutely thank you everyone for your time and Ditya? all the time commitments we so are you taking any that. digital photograph of uh, everyone in the screen now we can take subjected to certain charges which i will build it later <laughs> in, anyways after this uh, session venki is taking all of us to andhra bhavan yeah what, and... what about the plan we didn't hear any yeah 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 it's going to happen okay. and uh, right. minali is going to give all of us a t-shirt i we have munawar with we oh. have munawar with us hi munawar good to see you hi hi guys munawar hello everybody fleshman hilliard uh, hilliard hi uh, hi 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 pascal hello everybody and, and over to uh, aditya let's move to the next session thank you i have taken the pictures i'll leave thanks, it thanks thanks a lot thank, thank you. you thanks everyone great thank you. Thank you.